anybody catch the Reserve Bank Governor Michelle Bullock this week? You might just have to sell your home because we've got to fight inflation here at the RBA. It's a tricky one. With the economic growth figures, the GDP for June out this week also, Michelle's warning, it was all about the economy. But there was Bill Shorten too. Oh, there was carbon capture and storage, one of the most epic scams in all of history. Albo getting bashed from both sides all week. And they dusted off, they even dusted off good old Johnny Howard for an outing. But first to the brawl over the economy. Yes, slow growth. It's a global thing, as Alan Austin points out on the website this week. Australia's sort of fair to middling in the middle of the pack as far as economic growth and other stats are concerned. We've slipped, but it's all to do with the last government as well as this government. Just a couple of points here in regards of Jim Chalmers and Albo, or Jim Chalmers particularly criticising the RBA. All politicians do it if it suits them. The RBA is independent and it is a good scapegoat thing is going on in the economy. And yes, a woman on a million bucks a year, Gillian, Michelle, having to say that people might have to sell their homes because they've got too much debt. Yes, that's a reality. And the RBA has to fight inflation. Yes, that's its principal mandate. That's a reality. And no, she's not wrong. If you borrow when rates were 1%, on the assumption they'd always be 1%, you can't blame the RBA. And inflation is a global thing principally. Yes, there is government spending, which adds to it a bit here. Contraction in private spending is the growth figures show. But do they cut rates at the next meeting? Well, you'd have to think they will now. You'd have to think the GDP figures showing sagging growth would be enough for a rate cut. Mind you, we are now in six consecutive quarters of per capita recession. That is, if you strip out immigration, we're actually in negative territory. It is dire out there. And low growth, as I said, is a global thing. So it's a double whammy as predicted. They have to manage immigration and the numbers. They have to manage them back. They have to wind it back. But it's immigration at the same time, which is keeping us out, which is keeping Australia out of real recession. So what happened? Well, coming out of COVID, companies hoisted prices big time. A lot of it was profiteering. A lot of it was fair enough because they're in prep input prices, energy and so on went up to. Now the big evil, according to the financial press, is government spending. It's only the government spending which is keeping us in the black. Look at the private sector contracting. Yes, the private sector is shot at the moment. Plenty of money. They're not in any danger, but they are not spending well. The coalition and the finance press are lambasting the government as expected for this government spending. Hume, our hero Jane Hume, was out this week urging that they gouge $100 billion. They slash $100 billion from government spending. And of course, more tax cuts for high income people. You can have it always, all and every way when you are in opposition. How's that going to fix it? Cut government spending in the cost of living crisis when the economy is going nowhere and hand out tax cuts to those people who don't need it to keep inflation firing. It's hardly a policy. It's more of a joke. But Jane is going for her second scam of the week, obviously. Nine years of the previous regime cutting the APS, literally outsourcing government to PwC and the other big four and consultants, has meant that Albo has been restoring 24,000 public servants. That costs money. It has to happen. What's the point of paying somebody $1,000 an hour? when you can get a public servant to do it. It has to happen. Yes, it is inflationary, but yes, it makes up for the lack of spending in the private sector also. Now, what's the scam with Bill Shorten? Now, we expected Bill when the announcement, when we heard the announcement to bob up in a cushy job for the boys, you know, ambassador to Paris or something like that, a reward for Albo, lumping him with the most tricky portfolio of all the NDIS. Okay, they could have put him in environment. That would have been worse, but that special role has been earmarked. That special role in our petro state has been earmarked for Tanya Plibersek. But did Bill go to the OECD or Rome? Did he go into lobbying like so many of our former elected officials? A special envoy ship, perhaps? No, he got a real job. Still taxpayers' money, but vice-chancellor of 
ANU. I think it's good import. I think it's a good appointment. He's very competent. He will leave a hole in the Labor Party. So what's the scam here? Obviously, Bill is disappointed at not getting into government. 2019, he was ousted for having too much in the way of policy. He was pipped at the post for the big chair by ScoMo, thanks to Lazarus ScoMo rising with his epic fear campaign, franking credits and foreigners and all sorts of things. And that is why where we are, where we are now. Albo copying it from both sides. Labor tried real reform. It fell victim to populist politics. Liberal and Labor parties are closer in politics now, in policy, than the Greens and the Independents. Ergo, Peter Dutton. Ergo, Albo is hogging the centre to get re-elected. It's a political tactic. The problem, as we've been saying for a decade, is it's money in politics. It is the system. Policy timidity a stasis in reform. And we see that in the shift to the minor parties. Elsewhere, they dusted off good old John Winston Howard, the former Liberal leader, to have a crack at Jim Chalmers, who handled it quite gracefully. Always good to hear from John, besides dragging us into two totally useless, destructive wars. He has some authority in these matters, as it was his policies which made Australia unfair, a cost-of-living crisis for half the population. Check out the chart. Here it is. Moderating under Labor governments, rocketing under Liberal governments since 2000 when the CGT relief came in. Disposable income versus house prices. There's been some progress made also under Labor with real wages, but it has received a hospital pass. We were going to go into recession at some point, come out of COVID in reasonably good shape thanks to immigration, but the policies are all tweaking around the edges in the two-party state. The week kicked off with an epic, epic scam when it finally came to pass that Australia was actually importing gas. Yes, the world's biggest or close to it LNG exporter is actually finally importing gas back from overseas. Yes, probably some of the same gas that we had already exported. Those same, very same molecules that we drilled here. Now that is a heck of a scam. Rather than earmark the gas for local consumption and get electricity prices down like they do in WA, we export it and buy it back so electricity prices go up. What a wonderful, wonderful scam it is. A scam, of course, that just helps a handful of multinational gas exporters. Politicians can't stand up to their lobbying. And lending to the epicness of this scam is the very tooth fairy of climate. You know the tooth fairy. True story. You bury your tooth under the pillow and magically you get some free money. In this case, you bury the carbon under the soil and you get some free money from government. It's called carbon capture and storage. They've been talking about it for 20 years. It doesn't work. And there it was in Rupert's Fossil Fuel Daily, the Israelian, a report by none other than the two fairies themselves, the Australian energy producers. It used to be called Arpia, and now it's the lobby group, the stalking horse for multinational foreign fossil fuel exporters. They claim that they could clean Australia up carbon capture and storage to the tune of $600 billion by burying carbon under the earth just like putting the tooth under the pillow. The only problem is it doesn't work. As we've chronicled many times here, talked about it for 20 years and subsidising it, forking out public money to multinational corporations does not work. It's a gigantic scam to keep fossil fuels for running for longer. Australia needs to electrify now locally in small projects and in big projects too. It's happening, but it's happening too slowly. So the scam of the week goes to the Australian energy producers, to the tooth fairies themselves. It should really be called not the Australian energy producers, but the foreign multinational energy producers in Australia. The tax scammers society for managing to somehow gouge public money on a bogus technology, carbon capture and storage, stick those subsidies on their bottom line while drilling for more gas and getting more fossil fuel projects approved. That is what you call a scam.